The crypto bull market is back and this is your chance to change everything. Those who play their cards right could be walking away with life-changing gains. This year alone, we saw a doubling in the amount of crypto and Bitcoin millionaires. But the harsh reality is that most people don't make money. In fact, most people lose money in the markets. And why is that? It's because they make five deadly mistakes that usually cost them everything. So if you want to make sure that you avoid these mistakes and you come out on top in this crypto bull market cycle, then make sure you watch this video. This could very well be the most important video that you watch. Now that being said, my name is Mitchell Weirman and welcome to this video. If you enjoy watching videos like this one where I help you to break down the complex world of crypto and investing, then make sure to hit the like button uh, and if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well, because I'm going to be posting regularly throughout this crypto market cycle to help you to get an edge in this crypto market. My goal is to help as many people cross the finish line and to help them actually to come out victoriously. Because like I mentioned before, most people actually do not make money in the financial markets. They don't have a game plan in place. They don't know what they're doing. So pay attention and avoid these costly mistakes. Now, let's dive in. So five deadly mistakes that you should avoid this bull market cycle. If you make one wrong move because you haven't been paying attention, it could and will cost you everything. So like I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Bitcoin, the Bitcoin rally this year helped to create more than 84,000 new crypto millionaires in just a single year. Why did I want to share this with you? Well, because I want to show you that it is indeed possible to create life-changing wealth in crypto. Um, the number of crypto millionaires doubled to 172,300 over the last year. That's what a, a recent study found. So 172,000 crypto millionaires. Why not you? Why are you not part of this list yet? Well, probably it's because you have made one or all of these deadly mistakes. And I don't want you to make those mistakes. Here is a, a graphical representation. So the dark blue, uh, sorry, the dark green, that's Bitcoin. The light green is crypto. So last year we had 40,500 Bitcoin millionaires. Uh, this year we see almost, yeah, we see more than double. So 85,000 Bitcoin millionaires. If we look at crypto in its entirety, we saw that last year we had 88,200 uh, crypto millionaires. This year we have 172 crypto millionaires. So now you might be wondering, how do they actually get this data? Well, the blockchain is open and transparent. So you can basically track wallets that have more than a million dollars in value in it. And that's how you can extract this data. Will it be bulletproof? No, not really, because people can also spread their assets across multiple different wallets. For example, I have my uh, assets, my Bitcoin and other assets spread over different ledgers in different countries, stored in different safes. So they may or may not, they will probably not uh, count those. So in reality, there will probably be even more crypto millionaires than in this uh, chart. But again, I wanted to show you this because I want to show you how many are already part of the millionaire club within the crypto world. So I want to help you to cross this finish line as well and get there too. But in order to do so, you need to avoid these very costly mistakes. So the key to building wealth in the crypto markets is, is to understand the four year cycle. So basically, if you look at the uh, bottom to top uh, gains of these cycles, so this cycle, 11,645%, 7,382 percent and the last cycle almost 2,000 percent. So you buy low, you sell high, you buy low, you sell high. Basically, you try to write the cycles. That's how the big, uh, yeah, that's how the biggest amount of these investors that are now millionaires have built their wealth. Um, but it might sound very simple. But in reality, it's not, okay? I'm pretty sure there will be people in the comments below that are saying, oh, we know that you just buy low, you sell high, you buy low, you sell high. In reality, there's more layers of complexity. And in this video, I want to unravel all of that to help you to make sure that this bull market cycle, you're well prepared. Um, so let's talk about deadly mistake number one. So 
This mistake is not understanding that the bull market will at some point end. Why is this important? Well, during a crypto bull market, and not only a bull market, but also a bear market, you usually tend to see that all of the, the, the messages on social media, but also on WhatsApp with your friends, everything is an echo chamber, meaning that it enforces each other. When people are positive about crypto, then all of the uh, dinners with your friends and all of your conversations will be about how Bitcoin is only going up and up and how much money everyone is making. When the market goes down, it's the other way. Then, yeah, suddenly, like, people are negative about Bitcoin and all of the conversations are negative and it enforces this sentiment. And um, there is a book called um, Thinking Fast and Slow. And in this book, they explain the different biases that we have as humans when we're thinking about something. And one of those biases is the recency bias. And this is very important to understand. So what is the recency bias? Well, the recency bias means that you base your decisions on uh, very recent experiences. So for example, if Bitcoin has been going up for the past few weeks or months, then we usually have the tendency because of recency bias to believe that Bitcoin will only go up and up and up and up because that's our experience in the past few weeks. Similarly, if Bitcoin goes down, then in the past few weeks, then we tend to believe that Bitcoin will go down and go all the way to zero because it has been going down for the past few weeks and it seems like there is no end in sight. So that is the recency bias and it's really important to decouple yourself from this recency bias. And it's hard because this is wired in our human way of thinking. So one thing that really embodies this recency bias is this Wall Street cheat sheet. So you can Google this. Uh, basically, it shows that every asset moves in cycles. It can be stocks, crypto, real estate, watches. Every asset moves in cycles. And if you analyze all of the market cycles and all of the different assets, then you will tend to see a similar pattern. And this is the pattern. So a market cycle goes from disbelief to hope, so there's a little bit of hope in the market. And suddenly, when the price tends to go up, everyone becomes optimistic. And then this turns into belief, so people start to believe even more that it's only gonna go up and up and up. And this will get people even more greedy. So they will start to borrow money to get into this asset because they believe it will only go up from there. And then you reach a stage of euphoria where everything gets completely disconnected from the fundamentals and the underlying asset. and uh, people get extremely greedy, borrowing money, selling their house, selling their car to put it in some stock or crypto or some other investment. And then you reach a point where valuations are completely disconnected from reality. That's when we usually see a bit of a correction. Um, but we don't go straight, straight down from there. Usually we see a little relief rally uh, because the market believes that we just it's just another dip and the market needs to cool off before they go uh, before it goes back up but that's not the reality the market tends to tank and because people have a bad experience because the market has been going down for a few weeks straight they believe oh shit now it's going to go down it's going to go to zero i need to cash out my positions before it's going to go all the way to zero and then we see a cascading effect where people start to sell off more and more of their positions even if their positions are in in loss uh, and that's when people get in panic and they sell everything and they, they try to get out of the market at all costs. This write up and this write down are the perfect embodiment of recency bias. So believing that whatever we've experienced in the past days and weeks will be how the market is going to continue to behave. But it doesn't work like that. All bull markets end at some point. Uh, and within crypto we usually see that whenever a bull market ends, we see a very steep correction down. So uh, here in the first cycle, we saw that Mount Gox collapsed, collapsed and we saw a minus 96% correction. Then the next cycle, we saw a minus 86% correction. The next cycle, we saw a minus 84% correction. And the cycle, the previous cycle, we saw a minus 77% correction. Now, if you analyze these data points, you see that the corrections are becoming less deep. So we don't see a minus 96% correction anymore. Uh, maybe, yeah, it's because the, the asset is maturing. So we've got more buyers that are buying up the dip and that are 
basically understanding more of the asset class and aren't just trading based on FOMO and hype, but they believe long term in Bitcoin. So they're willing to buy up the dip uh, even after such a big correction. Also, we've seen a few cycles now. So yeah, people are just more experienced. They understand what is going on in the market. They're seeing all of the adoption. So yeah, people become less scared during these dips and corrections. But again, you need to understand that all bull markets will at some point end. Um, it will not always go up. And similarly, when you're in a bear market, it will not always go down. So you need to learn how to decouple yourself from this recency bias that I'm showing over here. So that's the first deadly mistake that you should avoid at all costs. Now, let's talk about the second uh, deadly mistake, which is not having a game plan. So um, here is a quote by Jim Rohn, which I thought was really valuable to share with you here. And in case you don't know who Jim Rohn is, Jim Rohn is one of the grandfathers of the self-development uh, industry. Actually, he's the mentor of Tony Robbins. Maybe you know Tony Robbins, also a very famous uh, success coach. And what Jim Rohn is saying uh, in this quote, I remember saying to my mentor, if I had more money, I would have a better plan. And his mentor responded uh, to Jim Rohn and he said, I would suggest that if you had a better plan, you would have more money. You see, it's not the amount that counts, it's the plan that counts. And that's exactly what's true. It's a cause and effect relationship. Most people believe that they will become better investors and they will take investing more serious when they have more money, but it's actually the other way around. If you would take investing more serious, then you would have more money. Let me know in the comments below if you agree that that is the correct relationship between your actions and your results that you're having. Here's another quote by Terence McKenna. Uh, Terence McKenna is actually someone that's more in the spiritual field. Um, yeah, he's uh, known for his experiments with psychedelics, but nevertheless, it's an important quote that relates to this topic. And this quote is, if you don't have a plan, you become part of someone else's plan. And I would rephrase this quote to relate it to investing. And I would say, if you don't have a game plan for your money, your money will become part of someone else's game plan. So uh, here, if we look at the rainbow chart, for example, uh, if you don't know the rainbow chart, uh, let me briefly explain it. Here is uh, the black line is the price of Bitcoin. And the colors that you're seeing, it's not some LGBTQ chart. No, it's something different. Those colors resemble the market sentiment. Um, and the market sentiment ranges from complete fear, which is the, or, uh, the, the purple line, all the way to extreme greed. We humans are emotional beings. We tend to make our decisions based on emotions, our emotions of fear and greed. So whenever we're fearful, we want to sell it because we want to get rid of it because we think it's going to crash, it's going to go to zero. Whenever we're greedy, we want to buy more of it because we believe it's only going to go up and up and up. Again, that's the recency bias. Um, and if you do not have a game plan, then probably you will base your investing decisions on your emotions, fear and greed. So instead of relying on your emotions, it's much better to have a, ah, wait, before we talk about that. So something that only emphasizes your emotions are the wills, the wills that are manipulating the market. So now it might sound very logical to you that you should just buy during times when the market is fearful and you should sell when the market is greedy. But in reality, it's not that easy. Why? Because we have companies like BlackRock. BlackRock in case you don't know it, it's the largest asset manager in the world. They're known as a company that owns the world. And they own a lot of media companies. So they own, I believe, CNN, BBC, Fox News, uh, and many of the media outlets that are creating the news and shaping the news and, and our public perception of the markets. And right now, uh, BlackRock owns around 370,000 Bitcoin. That's quite a big supply of Bitcoin. And they keep on buying more and more and more. So they are very actively involved in the market. And BlackRock is known as a company that manipulates the market. So for example, whenever Bitcoin dips, 
they uh, steer their media companies, which they own and are majority shareholders in, to publish very negative news articles and very negative uh, news broadcasts so that the retail investors and the masses believe that the market is just negative. It's better to leave the market, to exit, because it's only going to go down from there. So the whales, BlackRock, and a few other big investors, institutions that are in the markets have very close ties with these media companies, manipulate the masses. So they will play a super emotional game with you that only emphasizes your uh, that only amplifies your emotions of fear and greed. So I want you to decouple your investment decisions from your fear and your greed. And how do you do this? By creating your own investment game plan. So your own investment game plan can be as simple as making a Google Doc. And within this Google document, you outline what investment, what assets are you investing in? Why specifically are you investing in these assets? What is going to be your entry plan? So how do you buy into this asset? Are you going to dollar cost? Are you going to lump sum? Are you going to do weighted dollar cost averaging? So in case you don't know what it is, it means that, for example, you dollar cost average. Dollar cost averaging means that every month or every period you buy the, uh, into the market with the same amount of money. So let's say $100 every month. But you could also do weighted dollar cost averaging where you say, I'm going to buy at fixed intervals, so every single month. But depending on uh, how high or low the market is, I'm going to buy a little bit more or a little bit less. But I'm going to keep doing this at fixed intervals. And it helps to make a set of rules for yourself, how you're going to determine this amount and at what uh, intervals you're going to be buying. So that's your entry plan. The same with your exit plan. When are you actually going to take profits? You see those virtual numbers on your screen, on your phone or your computer, whenever you're looking at your crypto portfolio, you cannot go to the supermarket and buy anything with that. No, those are unrealized gains. At some point you need to realize those gains and actually take profit. Most people don't take profits because they believe, again, recency bias, that the market is only going to go up and up and up. But then the moment comes that we see a crash uh, here as well. So we see that this whole market goes down. Um, and then you haven't taken any profit. So then you need to wait another four years to take profits on your positions. So you could avoid that by having an entry plan in place so that you don't only base your investment decisions on your emotions of fear and greed, but actually have a written out instructions for yourself on when you're going to buy and sell uh, your positions. And then finally, what indicators are you going to use to aid your investment decisions? So when you're creating this document, so this Google Doc uh, about yeah, how you're going to formulate your investment game plan or yeah, what actions you're going to be taking, I have one rule for myself and that's you should keep this game plan as simple as possible. If you explain this to your mom, you should be able to explain it to her in very simple words or your neighbor and they should be able to understand it. If you want to know my game plan, uh, not that long ago, I uploaded a video on my YouTube channel uh, called How to Perfectly Time the Crypto Market. And in this video, I explain my game plan. So what assets I'm investing in, uh, why I'm investing in it, uh, what my entry plan is, my exit plan is, and what indicators I'm using to uh, aid my buying and selling decisions. Uh, very useful video. I highly recommend you to check it out because it will help you to also create your investment game plan. Okay, let's talk about uh, the deadly mistake number three. So the third deadly mistake is not testing your exit routes. Why is this important? Well, during peak boom market times when you should actually be taking profits, that's when uh, blockchains and exchanges get congested. What do we mean with congested? We mean so much volume is happening on those blockchains and platforms that sometimes they're very slow, they're very costly, and sometimes they just stop at all. So here you see a post like Binance halted withdrawals due to Bitcoin network congestion. Or the Solana network is experiencing a high volume. If your transaction fails, you can safely refresh your wallet and try again. So we, we slowly start to see these blockchains and 
uh, networks give issues. So how can we avoid these issues and how can we make sure that we actually take profits on the right time and don't miss these important windows of opportunity? Well, here I created a list of solutions for you that will help you to avoid this. So the first solution, uh, which I recommend you to do and which I also do myself, is before you're actually thinking of, before you actually need to take profit, start to plan ahead, slowly start to send a little bit of your funds to the exchanges. So if you want to take profits because the uh, market is reaching one of your exit points or exit levels, start to send some of it to an exchange. Preferably not one exchange, just a few exchanges so you can diversify um, so that ahead of time, you have your uh, your crypto positions liquid there so that you can cash them out. You don't need to wait for the slow blockchains or the slow network or any issues that will hold you back. You have your positions already there so you can easily cash them out. The next thing which I recommend you to do is uh, make use of multiple exchanges to cash out your positions. Why? Because during these peak bull market times, again, like you're seeing over here, Binance has halted withdrawal due to Bitcoin network congestions. You don't want to be reliant on just one exchange because they can fill when you need them the most. Um, also, ahead of time, I recommend you, actually you should probably do it right now, to pass all of the KYCs on your exchanges that you're planning to use when you're going to cash out your positions. Because when you're not, uh, when you haven't passed your KYCs, then there will be limits to how much you can send or withdraw uh, from your account. So having all of the, those limits removed will help you to do larger transaction volumes when you need them. So uh, if you still need to KYC during those periods, then you might lose very valuable times and this could cost you quite a lot of money and time and frustration. Um, before you actually want to start cashing out large amounts of money when you're taking profit, first cash out small chunks of money so that you've gone through the process, the money hits your bank account. Uh, ideally, I would do this from multiple different exchanges. So I would have at least three different exchanges and I would have a few different crypto friendly bank accounts. So not all banks are crypto friendly. In fact, the large majority of banks don't really like crypto transactions. Uh, so try to find a few banks that are at least crypto friendly uh, so that you can cash out your positions from the exchanges and send them to your bank account and then you can buy some nice stuff. Maybe you want to invest in property, you want to buy a car, you want to travel, pay for your living expenses, make investments, whatever. Uh, I believe it's important to start cashing out large sums of your crypto so that you've at least tested those exit routes. Um, and if you're not planning on cashing out and holding fiat currency for whatever reason, some people don't want to cash out their crypto for tax purposes. I believe that anyone should declare their crypto, uh, but if you don't, that's not my worry. Other people don't want to hold fiat money because yeah, whatever, it's just losing value over time, but it's kind of counterintuitive to then hold uh, fiat, uh, stable coins because those are also connected to fiat currencies. Anyways, if you want to hold stable coins, I highly recommend you to hold at least two or three different stable coins because also stable coins can crash and burn. We've seen that with UST in the previous bull market cycle. So always, always, always diversify. Diversify with exchanges, diversify with bank accounts, diversify with stable coins. Have a plan in place to cash out. Um, and if you're planning to uh, hold on to stable coins, uh, after you've taken profits, then please take those stable coins off exchanges because also exchanges can go bust. We've seen that with FTX. Um, yeah, and you don't want to risk losing everything after you've you know put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into building up that wealth. Uh, if you have a big amount of stables, I also recommend you, again, to diversify. Uh, I personally have multiple different cold storage wallets spread across the world. Uh, I'm a f <laughs> I might sound a little bit paranoid, but I believe it's better to prevent something than to be sorry after you've lost it because you've been hacked, scammed, robbed, whatever. It's better to diversify it and, and spread it across multiple different cold storage wallets. So those are my solutions to this problem. Um, 
all of these points that I just mentioned will help you to take advantage of really valuable windows of opportunity when crypto is really high and you can maximize your uh, cash out or your profits um, at, at, at those periods. You don't want to be hindered by network congestion or exchange failures. So please do these things ahead of time before you need them. All right, because when you need them, it will be too late and you will miss out on valuable gains. Okay, deadly mistake number four uh, is not doing your own research. You see, when I hear people, especially in the crypto market, when they talk about investing, when I ask them about their investment strategy, basically what they're doing is they're blindly copying investments from other people in their close proximity, from their friends, their family members, like everyone knows like people in their network that made some money with uh, crypto and they overhear this in a conversation. They go home and they throw some money left and right at different investments, hoping to get rich overnight. You see, that is not investing. To me, that's gambling. And you might be better off just going to the casino and putting all of your money... <laughs> on one different number at the roulette table. This is not me telling you to do that, it's just an analogy. So why do I make this analogy? Because in the past few months, over 30 million uh, coins have been created, okay? And it's very hard to determine which coin is actually going to pump or not. So in reality, most people have no clue. They're just throwing their money left and right. And that's the perfect recipe to lose all of your money. And that's why most people lose money in the crypto market. Now, one of the people that I have learned a lot about uh, investing from is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, I call him the GOAT, which is uh, an acronym standing for, yeah, which stands for the greatest of all times. Warren Buffett is one of the wealthiest people in the world with a net worth of over $100 billion. And he has only two rules for investing. Rule number one is never lose money. Rule number two is don't forget rule number one. So, while most crypto investors are looking to get super rich overnight uh, and, and are willing to risk everything, Warren Buffett takes a different approach. He's saying, all right, let me just focus first on not losing money. And if in the process I can make a little bit extra and I can do that over time, then my wealth will start to compound. And that's exactly how, how, how he became the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest people in the world. So what do I personally look for in projects? Well, I look for five things. Number one is I look for a proven track record. Many crypto investors are looking for small cap uh, altcoin gems that can go 100x, 1000x, but the probability is 99.99% that they will go to zero, yet they're willing to lose all of that. I don't invest in small cap coins anymore. I am personally invested only in mid to large cap coins because they already have a proven track record. I am just trying to look for certainty that my investment is not going to go to zero and that I'm not going to lose money. And instead, I'm going to consistently grow my wealth over the long term by holding this investment. So by focusing on projects with a longer track record that have not just been launched yesterday, I increase the odds of not losing money. Then I look for solid founders. So in the crypto space, there are many projects that are launched anonymously. Uh, I personally believe that's a big red flag. Why would you lose? Why would you launch something anonymously? Uh, so I look for founders that are known, that have logical and proven track records. Um, and yeah, I like to bet on founders. Whenever you're listening to, for example, venture capitalists in Silicon Valley, what they will tell you is that they will bet on founders. Anyone can have an ID, but it's all about execution and uh, looking for founders that have a proven rec track record. For example, they've been very active in a particular field or they have built previous businesses. For me, that's a big green flag. I want to search for adoption. What is adoption? You want to see that the number of transactions, for example, if you're investing in a new blockchain, that the number of transactions, the number of wallets is increasing, the number of apps that are being built on top of it are increasing or if you are um, uh, investing in some kind of DAP decentralized application, you want to see that the number of users using the DAP is uh, increasing. So you want to look for signs of adoption. Why? Ultimately, what determines the price is supply and demand. And you want to see that the supply is limited while the demand goes up. And that usually tends to mean that the price of an asset goes up over the long term. 
yeah, and that's also my fourth point. So no, point number three, adoption and uh, tokenomics, they're kind of hand in hand. Although tokenomics looks a little bit deeper into what are the uh, what are the mechanisms through which tokens are created, what are mechanisms through which tokens are burned, um, and what really gives value to those tokens. So that's really important to understand. And then finally, I also look at the distribution of token uh, ac across token holders. Why is that important? Well, if you see that a few people are holding the largest proportion of the tokens, then that's very risky because if they dump all of their tokens on the market, then probably the, the price of the project will dump very hard or will even go to zero. So that's a big risk. Again, my philosophy and that of Warren Buffett is to not lose money. I'm looking for any potential red flags which, which might indicate that I might lose a lot of money. I want to eliminate as many of those red flags as possible and I will only invest when there is almost a, yeah, a really good track record. I wouldn't say certainty because there's never certainty in the financial markets, but you want to get as much certainty as possible that something is going to increase over the long term. And to get that, you need to do your own research because again, there's a lot of coins that are being launched which have just been designed to rob you of all of your hard-earned money. And finally, uh, the, the final deadly mistake that you can make is getting lazy. So when the market goes up, when everyone is making money, we tend to forget that there's a lot of scams, rug pulls and bad actors out there that are trying to rob you of your hard-earned money. And within the crypto space, your wealth can actually grow quite rapidly. Remember these examples from the intro. So the number of crypto millionaires doubled to 172,000 in the past uh, year. So whenever there's a lot of wealth created, a lot of bad actors are uh, attracted to that industry to rob you of your wealth. So we see hacks, f uh, phishing scams, exchange breaches, and many investors, after they've built up uh, their capital, lose it because they have been very lazy with their cyber security. So I've created something called the Fort Knox Protocol. So in case you don't know what Fort Knox is, Fort Knox is where the US government stores their uh, gold reserve. And this is known to be the most secure vault in the world, the most secure base. There's many different layers of security. And uh, I've been in crypto for a while now, and I believe that if you want to protect your wealth, you need to create your own Fort Knox. Uh, and I have done a lot of research, talked to a lot of people, and I've assembled a lot of best practices to help you and me to protect our crypto wealth. So there's three layers to my Fort Knox protocol. Layer number one is securing your crypto. So this kind of relates to uh, yeah, who, who owns the keys to your crypto wallet. Uh, the second layer is securing your devices. So your crypto is only as safe as your devices are. And then finally, adjusting your own behavior. So of course you are a critical component in this as well. So. I have as a gift to you, because I want to help you to cross the finish line, this bull market cycle, I have basically put my entire Fort Knox protocol into a checklist and I'm going to briefly go over it uh, so that you can check all of these things off. I, I used to give this in a, uh, in a $2,000 course called Crypto Mastery. I gave this to my students to help them to secure their wealth, but as a present from me to you, uh, I'm just going to give it to you so that you can also protect your own crypto. Uh, all I ask for you in return is to smash the like button. So let's quickly go over this sheet and I'll make sure to link it in the comments below. So here is a list of security measures uh, and here um, is an explanation of all of these security measures and you can simply check them off. So ideally, you want all of these security measures to be checked off and to be green, um, and that will help you to maximize your security as a crypto investor. It's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. And one of the factors um, that is risking or that's a potential threat to your wealth is yeah, those scams and rug pulls and all of those bad actors in the market that are after your money. So by implementing the Fort Knox protocol, you'll be safe from those bad actors. Now, that being said, 
Um, of course, check out the Fort Knox protocol, which I've linked in the, in the description below. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Please make sure that you avoid these five deadly mistakes because if you fall for these mistakes and if you make them, then you might at some point be at a point where yeah, you've risked everything, you've lost everything while other people have actually gone and, and made life-changing amounts of money this crypto bull market cycle. And I don't want you... Uh, I don't want that to happen to you. And you can do so by just avoiding these five deadly mistakes, planning ahead, creating your game plan. Um, yeah. So if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to hit the like button. Let me know in the comments below what you thought was the most important insight from this video. And if you haven't done so yet, also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm going to be posting regularly throughout this crypto market cycle to help you to get an edge in this market and to help you to cross the finish line with life-changing gains. That being said, see you in the next one. Peace out.